This is another, excuse me, this is another navigation video. <clears throat> Only it's going to be pretty sophisticated and it's going to end up having a lot of exegetical value. What I've been trying to do um, is show how meter helps you validate scripture. In other words, are these really the words that God had Matthew write versus some later guy sticking in his own words? Because, you know, scripture's been copied over and over again, and a lot of people argue, well, you know, we don't really have the right word of God, especially the stupid KJV people. Okay. And this is proof that they're wrong. This is proof that we got the original words. Because this kind of mathematical precision was unknown to the people who copied it. Was unknown to the people who studied it. Was completely unknown to the Catholics. Remains unknown to the Catholics. So if it's this precise and this accurate, then nobody messed with it. Even though we can have, you know, errors. Like, for example, this is Lerontes. That means speaking. Each one speaking. Each one saying. All right? If this ass was an N, Legonten, instead of Legontes, nobody reading Greek would be confused by that. Okay? Oh, we know that that, you know, he got tired and he couldn't really make the full S letter, so it looks like an N. Okay? Or this little letter here. This is an Ada. Okay? And if somebody was really tired and they, they turned it into a V, which is also the way the N looks in, in Greek, the N looks like a V in English. Everybody would still know that means matetai. The students. The, the, putting a V here doesn't change it. So, you know, when you make a typo in one of your emails or a comment, if you say T-E-H, everybody knows it means T-H-E. They just overlook it. They just read what you say anyhow. That's a lot of what's going on here. Okay? But what I want to focus on is your proof that this is really the Word of God and what it means is so sophisticated once you start looking at what the meter means. Now, if you go to meter meaning, this, these, are, these are actual numbers that are used in the text when you read the dates in the Bible for certain events and the events are paradigmal. In other words, like Jacob was 21 years uh, indentured to Laban, making himself a slave to Laban. And he comes out 21 years later because God orders him to leave. When he comes out, he comes out with two families. So 42 ends up being the double growth of Jacob. It's if you remember what 21 is, then you laugh when you see 42. Because that's basically how many people in addition to himself that he brought out of there. Okay? If you don't count the concubines and you don't count the servants and all that other stuff. Okay? So, that's hysterical. When he left Laban, I'm talking about when he left Laban. I'm not talking about when he goes into Egypt. I'm talking about when he left Laban. And so everybody who knows that story is going to laugh when they see 42. It has a very pregnant meaning. 49 is the number of years that the temple, first temple, was down before they went back to the land and started reconstructing it. Okay? And then 56 is the seven extra sabbatical years that would have elapsed during the 49, which is actually central to the whole Bible. The whole reason why there's church is because of those extra seven years. Well, you have to spend a lot of time reading and knowing the Bible to know that. But once you do, all you see is the number and it's like, oh yeah, I get this. Alright? So it's very witty, it's very meaningful, and it's very helpful. So now, in each one of these keywords, Apocrites, over here we got Amen, over here we got Blepo and Horao, and we got Simeon and Christos, Jesus, Parousia, okay, or Parousia. It's probably Parousia in the text because I'm counting his four syllables. Each one of these keywords has a distance, is a calculated distance that's divisible by seven. That was what I said in the last video. But there's more to it than that. They're nested. 
they're nested to make a point. Just like the numbers have a significance, like 21 refers back to Jacob and the growth. And, you know, he's in slavery for 21 years, so God pays him back double. Okay? So it's not just a number. It's got a whole doctrine behind it. All right? Same thing is true with the placement of each one of these words because they seven to each other. So God is giving you a cause and effect a nesting of history how one thing in history causes the next and the text acts like the activity like when you get up in the morning and you turn on the news you're gonna hear words about what happened okay but how can you integrate what happened into a historical context to know that what you're hearing where is its place in from the past and to the future where does it fit Okay, that's what this is doing. And the scribes who copied all this, why well, they're just copying one letter at a time, they don't know. Okay, but see, that's the proof that we got the original words because this precision they didn't know. And they were so superstitious if they did know what this history was, first of all, they would destroy the Bible because it's anti them. Okay, this is very anti the rulers who were ruling at that time. So if they actually knew what this text said, they would have destroyed the Bible. We wouldn't have it. Alright? And it's like, oh, this connects to this, connects to this, connects to this, and this is what happened next. They wouldn't be ignorant, and we wouldn't be either. So now that's your proof. They were diligently copying it because the Bible is like, oh, the finger of St. Paul. I'm going to copy this letter and that makes me holy. Well, thank God they thought that much. Or you wouldn't have this text. So the Bible is basically giving you a very detailed, nested set of cause and effect in history. And what is that cause and effect? Cause and effect is you and me. The decisions we make every day, what socks we're going to put on, what we're going to eat for breakfast, whether we're going to pay our bill on time. Those things don't seem to have any meaning at all. We're just, you know, it's like taking out the trash. Okay, but think about this. What if nobody took out the trash? What if everybody always took out the trash? That would have a historical impact. Okay? So our decisions in everyday life that seem so small and meaningless are not. Okay? You're salt of the earth. Are you thinking doctrine when you take out the trash? Are you thinking doctrine when you compose an email or decide what socks to wear? That's a really fun game. And it's really important in history. And this is the import. 21. You seem to be enslaved to circumstance now. You seem to be you know, indentured to Johnny needs a haircut, I gotta get air in the tires, um, I have to be at work by nine o'clock. That's the way your life seems to be. It seems to have no meaning and you're enslaved to it. But God is doing something with it. And what he's doing with it will benefit you if you're thinking doctrine. So you can be doing, okay, oh, 21. Okay, let's see, I have 21 Tic Tacs I have to measure out into my little container for the day. Okay, 21. Oh, that reminds me of Jacob. This is what the Jews actually did when they were doing their work. Back in the days when they knew what these meters was. Because be, because this made their enjoy made their work more enjoyable. Their boring, stupid, slavement work. It would make it more enjoyable. Okay, but it gets even more once you know what these anaphora do. So that's what we're gonna go through. Anaphora. Amen Lego Homi. Believe it you when I tell you. What's that? Well, every single one of these. Once you look where they are in history, because we got 2,000 years of this timeline now that's passed, every single one of these is a judgment. Usually something that's got, you know, war associated with it. And it's always religious. It's always related to something, some problem of warring religion. 
So it's warring religious judgments. See, this first one is when the temple, it's at, when uh, John goes to Patmos. The text is about the temple being down. See, remember? See, no stone left on another. Okay. But the actual year that that text covers starts when John is on Patmos. He's exiled there. And what was happening in 88 AD? The mission was busy uh, persecuting Jews, not necessarily Christians. Jews. And he was only doing it in Rome. But if you're outside Rome and you see Domitian doing it, just like people want to emulate Trump, well, okay, if Trump does it, then I'm going to do it too. If Domitian does it, I'm going to do it too and then get in more favor with him. So that's pretty much how John ended up on Patmos. Domitian didn't put him there. Some zealous guy who hated Jews put him there. Because John is Jewish. Okay? So, first instance. I'm in Lego Humin. The text is the temple's going to be down. Yep. And yeah, now the actual event is 88 AD. Okay. The actual temple, of course, went down in 70, but that's indicated by this. 63 years. Okay. It's the number that talks about temple down in the Old Testament. Okay. The temple's going to the temple's going to be down. That's a Daniel 9 reference. Okay. 63 63 is like um what do you want to call it? 69 weeks. All right. It's leaving the last seven. You're going to have a hangover. All right. So now, 88 is the year that it references. And the conditions are, due to religious warring, the temple is down. Israel's in diaspora again. Because you can't, they, they blocked you from being able to, to rebuild or, you know, stay there. Okay. At that point. All right. The next one. The next one. What does the next one say? Oh, the next one is right here. I'm in Lego Humin Hoti. Believe it when I tell you that. And grammatically, I could put Hoti on the next line. So if I did that, this would be 1116 instead of 1118. In Biza's copy of Mark 13, he takes and puts Hoti on the next line. Okay. So, you can read this either way. And then, of course, the total will still be 1138 by the time you get to the end, but this would be 1116. So now, what's that? This generation, okay, which generation is that? The generation that's living in the 1140s. See, the meter's telling you when. Like we saw in the prior Amen Lego homie, we saw up here, when... When, 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 when? Okay, 63 years from when Christ talks. Alright, up to. It begins at 58, which is 88 AD. Okay, and it's going to end at 94, which is when the millennium was supposed to start. Had there been no church. Oh, temple down, yes, yeah, so end of time, blah, blah, blah. That's all, you know, dramatic, public warring and it's got this this whole connection to religion in it all right well so does this okay when this one starts here 1110 add 30 to get our ad that was 1140 we were in the middle of the second crusade or just getting about ready to have the third one okay i think it was the third one it might have been the second one okay well that was all about religious warring Oh, believe it when I tell you. Okay, so then the first one was about religious warring and the second one is about religious warring, huh? Okay. And what was the third one? Third one. Oh, well, this is the Reformation, specifically the English Reformation. Okay? It started a little bit before because the Bible now starts marking the reformers who started retranslating the Bible and saying, get us away from the papacy. And that was, that had started up here. That was Wycliffe and Huss. And then here you got the actual formal, you know, Zwingli and the, some other guy whose name I forget. And Luther. 
okay and then this this is Calvin and 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 and, and John Knox and this is when the English Reformation starts 1570 AD and oh that's religious worrying now so you have seen three occurrences in the past religious war one initially in the context of the words of the temple going down but it's talking about what happens as a result of that okay religious warring to second between second and third crusade all right or the beginning of the second the impetus for the second crusade i forget which of the two it was there were so many all right third well that's a date everybody knows the english reformation from 1570 to 1640 a.d and this guy here this curious that's 1640 a.d when it ended and you know who that guy was Charles I in 1640 to 1642 okay so that's whole three syllables because Matthew is using the Hebrew way of pronouncing that pronouncing things well from 1640 to 1642 Charles I was deposed because he wanted to tell England how to study Bible he wanted to take it away from her and just have the Catholic Church do it and they said no 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 we just went through this we aren't listening to you anymore. Your dad was King James, and he'd get a really good Bible that we all agree on, and we, and, we, and we learn. And we're learning Bible our way under God directly, not through some king or pope. So bye-bye. And they deposed him. Okay? They jailed him, and they deposed him. And then they came to their senses and realized you don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Having a king is still a good idea, but just make sure it's the right king. All right? So now we got a religious war indicated by Amen Lego, who mean three times. First time resulting in John on Patmos, second time resulting in the second or the third crusade, and the third time, all oh, the Reformation, everybody knows that. So what's going to happen the fourth time? This is the fourth time. 2000 plus 30 stands for... 2030 AD. That's coming up in the next 15 years. So if the last three times this phrase was used, it was religious war. What do you think's coming up? See? That's the that's the value of using of knowing these keywords. They, st they, they recur to give you the character of history. Alright? And then there's going to be another religious war coming up here. Okay? In, uh, what do you want to call it? Uh, between 2983 A.D. and 2989 A.D. Ooh, not good. Not, 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 not good. Okay, but we're, we don't... We, we concern ourselves with right now. See, right now, this is going to hit us in the future. This is going to hit your kids. This is going to hit your grandkids. And it's been, it was huge. It was always huge. Look, this was Rome all over the Levant. This wasn't just a city or a neighborhood which had crime. This was all over the world. Okay, in those days the world was considered the Mediterranean, okay. Okay, well, this was, this was bigger. This was all of Europe, pretty much all of the East, including Russia, and the Levant. Not just the Levant. The Levant means the Middle East. Okay. Okay, well, this one was all over the world, too. Because by this point we've got some colonies, or we're just starting to make some. And, and we we actually founded America as a result of this one, the Reformation. Everybody got so sick of the wars on the European continent. They said, okay, put me on a boat. Just send me east, send me west. I don't care. So they went on a boat. And Columbus had already gotten on a boat in 1492. And we were already going to the New World then. And a whole lot of people said, you know what? That sounds like a good idea. I'm taking my Bible with me and I'm leaving Europe. So they did. So it's pretty worldwide, 
And what do you think, therefore, this one's going to be? Since the Bible's known all over the world now, and we're all interconnected, even, even Trump has been in bed with Putin since the 1990s. You know, the fact that he's running for office now just means that we're finding out about it. But nobody would lend him money since the 1990s. So where'd he get it? He couldn't get it from China. The, the, all those lies about him getting China loans. It's not China that he got loans from. His son-in-law did, not him. He got, he got money from Russia. Because they were the only people who played footsie with him. Because it's Russian mafia. Okay. That's how come he's got so many Russian friends. Because they're, the, they're backing him because they want him to have political power so they can get inside our government and find out all this juicy information and manufacture their own. Okay. What Stalin and Lenin weren't able to do, Putin aims to do. Understand that. They hate us. Okay. And Donald Trump obviously hates us too. Okay, so the first courier is Donald Trump in 2015 running, 2016 elected. That's the second syllable here. Third syllable is 2017 where we are now. And all the phony Christians saying, Lord, Lord, they're calling him Lord. If you don't know about that and have proof of it now, just, just type in YouTube. Donald Trump anointed. Seven mountains. And you'll have more videos of so-called Christians calling him Lord than you can ask for. But this was written in 30 AD, not in 2017. So now, ooh, then maybe this is really the Word of God. Yeah. Are you going to learn it? Or are you just going to drool? Huh? Lord, Lord, open to us. They're busy drooling. You better not. Because as a result of their drooling... Apocrites, keyword apocrites, means to answer as a ruling. That means a judge. In other words, you go and you have a lawsuit. You put it before the judge. And then the judge answers. Crites, crateo, cretao, means to rule. Apo means from the source of. So something's coming from the source of the mouth of the judge. And what would that be? A ruling. Oh, Apocrites. Okay, so, ooh, Apocrites. Answering, Jesus said. Answering. The answering period. Starts in 2023, which is very close to us now. Answering, he said. So he's going to take seven years to set up his answer. Because the religious war is going to heat up. He doesn't cause the wars, but he uses them. And he's going to end up proving that all these Christians following Trump are bad. Because he's going to say, believe it when I tell you. I don't know you. And that will go through 2036 and 2041. Now, obviously, there's, there's phases to it. Because this meter is designed to be parsed by clause. So you have to look for the clauses. Okay, so that's a clause. I'm in Adopocrites Aipen. And then, then you introduce what's being said. I'm in Lego Humin is one phrase. That's one clause. Then Ukoida Homas is the other clause. Ukoida Homas means I don't know you. In other words, you're, all, you're calling on me, Lord, except that you're ta talking to Trump as if he were Lord, as if he were my anointed. I don't know who you are. That's, that's a Roman practice of disavowal. That's a Roman practice of disinheritance. Okay, it's like you go home to your parents and they say, we don't know you. It's, it's like divorce. It's like you're not my kid anymore. So now that means that they're going to be open to whatever is their damages. He's not going to protect them. Because they rejected him. Okay? You're going to call Trump Lord? Fine. He's your Lord. Let him protect you. Alright? So Apocrites means to answer with a ruling. And then comes the public religious war. Because what do you think is going to happen? 
with all these stupid Christians supporting a guy who's obviously a traitor. Alright, what do you think is going to happen? They're calling him Lord instead of the real Lord. Right here, see? That's Trump getting started. And that's now. 2017 is our year. What do you think is going to happen? God has to judge. And the way he often judges is to stand up. Okay, fine. You want Trump as your Lord? Go have him. Verily, verily, I say unto you, you have your reward. So this ain't going to be nice. I want to think of it as a second reformation because that's the reference we had before. You know, when we had Amen Lego Humin the last time, it was the reformation here, the English reformation, which is a positive thing. I mean, it was painful and horrible, and a lot of people died and suffered and were persecuted. But at the end of it, Bible came out free. Well, then at the end of what we're going to go through, Bible's going to come out free of all those bastards who are busy trying to tell you that Trump is Trump is the the anointed one. That that's the word they're using. That's what Christos means in Greek, anointed one. And you say you're a Christian and you fall for that? When the guy has cheated everybody his whole life, he's lied his whole life. I mean, there, there's there's not a single immoral thing this guy has done that hasn't been in the public press for 30 years. There's nothing new here. This isn't an invention of the mainstream media. He's cultivated and made all of his peccadillos public on purpose, even to the point of calling himself John Miller, so he can announce he doesn't want to be faithful to Marla Maples. Okay, this is a guy who glories in screwing you. To him, that's manly. That means he's important because he's abused you, because he's cheated you, because he's hurt you. That makes him important and good. A sociopath. And you elected him? What do you think God's going to have to do about that? Ain't going to be good. And what do you think people are going to do about that? Because, you know, 50% of the people, they didn't really pay much attention. Oh, it's another presidential election. This isn't much different. Oh, yeah? And what does God have to do since all these apostate Christians are backing Trump? So now his own name, the Lord's own name, is being dragged in the mud. What does he have to do? I don't know you. Because you know what? You call yourself Christian, but you might as well be the devil. So, who are the real Christians then? Who is the real Christ? Is there a real God? And how is he going to demonstrate that if he doesn't judge the ones who are busy backing Trump? That's going on right now. It's already started. So, I'm in Lego Humin is religious war. So, you see, it's, it's these keywords and their distances. Like, apocrites means to answer as a ruling, followed by religious war. And the center of this whole history that goes to 3243 AD is right now. Verse 47, okay? That was the English Reformation between verse 47 and our verse 12, where we are upcoming. So between the Reformation and 2030, the 2000th anniversary of Christ's death, is a pivotal period to the whole history of the world, post-Christ. So it has to be public and it has to be bad because God has to show, hi, these people claim to speak for me, but they're not me. So everybody supporting Trump, one way or another, is going to be discredited, die. And a lot of them, you know what? The discreditation and the dying is going to be private and quiet. You know why? Because God doesn't like to punish. There's no point in his mind when he punishes you or me. He does it to teach. He's not doing it to hurt. 
He's using the pain or the suffering to teach. Okay, but if you're so dumb to live, you voted for Trump. Your brain is so empty. You, you wouldn't know pain if it hit you. Or when it does hit you, you can't learn from it. So a lot of these people are going to seem to live quiet lives and just die. Because ain't nothing you can do with them. They're like sheep being fattened for the slaughter. What do you do with a sheep? Or a cow? You treat it really nicely because you're fattening it up for the slaughter. You feed it, you comb it, you clean it, you talk to it, and then one day, honey, you're dinner. But all the time it lived, it wasn't being punished by you, it was being cared for by you. What do you think is going to happen here? Now. Hopefully I've gotten your attention. I'm sorry it took so long. It always takes me forever to do these videos. So navigating. See this? And it's only in certain sections like on page one. The orange shading. Like every single one of these. The, the ruling. These are like, hi, I'm going to issue rulings at verse two. Okay. And verse four. So in those years, divine rulings are being issued that are public. Well, what was the divine ruling being issued that was public? 49 years after Christ died, that was 79 AD. What happened? Vespasian, who assaulted the temple, dies. What happened? Pompey, the volcano, erupted. And that was important to do it that way because the Romans themselves personally would interpret it and did you can go read their literature at that time they interpreted both Vespasian's death and Pompey as a judgment against them by the gods well there's only one God but yeah it was a judgment against them hi you took down my temple now I'm taking you down so when Titus first came to power in 79 AD, he was under something of a cloud because the Romans were very suspicious, superstitious like Christians today. And it's like, oh, this bad thing happened. They characterized the beginning of your reign. Oh, we're in trouble. Yeah, you are. And some people learned from that, and that was the goal. Punishment in God's eyes is always to teach. It's not to make you hurt. He's only using the hurt to get your attention. Now he's got your attention. Hi, learn this. All right. So, Apocrites is a ruling. The second Apocrites right here, verse 4. Okay. What was that? Well, let's look. The second Apocrites was, 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 was 179 to 182. Yeah, and that was the judgment against Marcus Aurelius. Hi, you Romans, you were so busy priding yourselves on being philosophers and persecuting the Christians. It wasn't Aurelius who did it. It was it was the people in Rome who did it. Rome and in, you know, it's in territory. Alright, so I'm gonna I'm gonna judge you with Commodus who's gonna think he's the son of a god. Since you reject the son of God, I'm gonna give you a guy who thinks he's the son of a god. And then he'll steal all your money. Which is what he did. He's Commodus's big specialty was to take money from the from the Senate and give it to the people. So just like they stole from the Christians, now they're gonna have a guy over them who thinks he's the son of God and he's gonna steal from them. See the the wit is very specific and very biting to the period. Alright? Aurelius himself dies in one eighty. And for the, and, but Commodus had already been made co-emperor in 177. Well, actually before that, he was made Augustus in 177. So it was like a just shoot, smooth transition. That was a ruling, wasn't it? And now somebody else is ruling, isn't it? You see the wit here. It's very sophisticated, huh? It's matched to specific history and the wit of the words to the persons and events in that history is just unbelievable. And in this particular case, again, our time is one bookend of Apocrites. 
it ends in 20, 24 plus see, at 30, 2506 AD, but it started way up here where we are. You can see that's a book like this. That's coming up. It's a seven year tribulational quality period from 2023 to 2030. So it ends on the 2000th anniversary of Christ's death. You see the wit and matching of the meaning to the words. Can you understand now why this has to be public and bad? Can you understand now how every time a book retaste is being used, it's telling you, hi, this, this is what's going to happen during this period. I'm going to make some rule and you ain't going to like it. See? And yet it's just a word. And it's translated in the Bible, and answering Jesus said. So you get no clue of the importance of it. No clue at all. Yeah, because our parents, and our parents' parents, and our parents' 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 parents didn't teach us this meter. But it's still in the Bible. You're looking at it. So that's called the anaphoric center. Now that's yet future, so I don't quite know what that's saying. So I can't talk about it. But I can't talk about this one. The Amen Lego who mean public religious war judgment. This one is already passed. That was the English Reformation. And we're the other bookend of it because you have to look for the middle. See, look. I'm in one first time in verse two, first second time in verse thirty four, third time in verse forty seven, fourth time in Matthew twenty five twelve, fifth time in Matthew twenty five forty, sixth time in Matthew twenty uh, Matthew twenty five forty five. Six times. Okay, so I gotta have two on the right and two on the left, and the center's in the middle. And what is that? Well, at verse 47, we just saw it was the English Reformation. And the other book and is oh, 2036. From the 2000th anniversary of Christ's death for the next six years, truly I tell you, and he will be, I don't know you closes it off. It ain't pretty. Okay? Now what that ends up meaning, because God doesn't, you know, pretty much, He doesn't judge by just always throwing lightning out of the sky and doing earthquakes. He does do that, but most of the time the way God's judgment works, because He's aiming to teach, not destroy, is to let the people who are so screwed up just war with each other until everybody who's not in their group looks at them and says ooh the, God's not in these people yeah they don't know God so God doesn't know them so what we're going to be witnessing between now and 2041 because that's when this boy ends is the progressive discrediting of Christians and the temptation to the people watching is going to be, oh, well, then all Christianity is bad and God, the God of the Bible is false. And that has to be shown to be not true either. God is judging his own. And he should. And what that's going to do is set up the potential for the next phase of history, which starts in Matthew 25, 14, starting in 2061. He's going to wipe out the, the anti-Semites during this time here. I don't have time to explain why I know that now. And then after that, you'll see that it's sevens. Okay? Meaning that the, gr the growth desired occurred, but it's late. Okay? The man. That's always a synonym for Christ. Okay? Just as the man. There's, there's no definite article here, so it means Christ. Okay? As he was going away, he leaves to his own slaves. Okay, and this is the parable of the three, the three slaves. Two of them are really good, and one of them the pots. So that's how Christianity is going to be. Two-thirds good, and one-third pots. 
Well, that's better than 50-50. We got 50-50. This one started at the Austrian succession. Okay. We had 50-50. See, there were 10. And five of them, five of them, five of them were, were l under the spirit. Learning under the spirit, therefore called thinking. They, it's translated wise, but it should be translated thinking. Phronesis is a faculty of thinking. Of, criti you know, actually reasoning things out. And the other five, the other five, well, the other five were really more, fo foolish, more, like moron. Female version of moron, plural. Moron actually means idiot. So when you hear the Mormons talk about moroni, the I is a suffix in Hebrew meaning my, so it's my, 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 my moron. Moroni means my moron. <laughs> the angel who came up with that name to fool Joseph Smith was really witty. I can't wait to meet him. Okay. My moron. Moroni. Yeah. Okay. So, see, this is public judgment uh, with really marked by religious war. And, and this is a ruling by the ruler. And you'll notice that it's like, bam, bam, bam. Here's the ruling by the ruler. And then we have our next satirical thing, blepete, blepo. Let's look at that. Blepo means to look. Harao means to watch, kind of like spectator. Blepo means to pay attention to. You can be watching the, the sky, okay? You, or you can just be looking at the sky. If you're watching the sky, you're paying attention to it. If you're looking at the sky, you're just entertaining yourself. You're really paying attention to something else. It's a satire on seeing they don't see. Okay, so how do we start that out? Here's the ruling, but seeing they don't see it. And therefore comes religious war. And that's exactly how this sequence actually plays out in history. If you counted your syllables, you'd be starting at 40 plus 30 is 70 AD when the temple actually goes down. So that's clearly a ruling by God that no, 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 bad, bad, bad. And then by the end of it, it's 79 AD. And that's the end of the guy who took down the temple in 40 plus 30 equals 70. Bad, bad, bad. And his son, who's actually physically there to take down the temple and made the order to take down the temple, is taking over. And he finds out once he becomes emperor, it's no fun. Bad, bad, bad. And then, of course, Pompey goes under. You know, that was the Sodom and Gomorrah of its day. We know because the, the earth, the volcano was so fast, it preserved everybody in the middle of whatever acts they were doing. And we found out exactly what they were doing when the flood of lava hit them. Bad, bad, bad. All right. So they're not seeing anything, are they? They're in Pompey, they're dead. Vespasian has died in 79, just before the volcano hit, and they're all dead. So what are they seeing? See, because blepete means see. Look. Pay attention. They ain't paying attention to nothing. How can you pay attention to anything when you're dead? So that's every single time. Get this. Every single time that blepo is used in each one of these verses. And it's used a lot. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then all these other times that are in the future. Every single time it's used that we have as our past, somebody died at the exact place of the syllable count. Like this first one, see verse 2, verse 2, see, before verse 2 we had a clause of the ruling, which ended at 79 AD, right? And, and, and Titus came to power then. The son of Vespasian. So that's 79, 80, 81. First syllable and blepete. Okay, but in 81, that's when Titus died. So he ain't seeing nothing. And everybody blepoing him is blepoing him dead. He ain't blepoing nothing because he's dead. His eyes are dead. But their eyes are living, so they're blepoing him be alive. 
They're blackballing him while they're alive, rather. See? Blackball, he's dead. He ain't seeing nothing. And the people who are alive are just as dead as him. This is when the mission comes to power. At the death of Titus. Which is marked by Blackball. You see, you can look up Titus if you want. I'm, so you can see I'm not making up this information. I don't believe in alternative facts. Truth speaks for itself. All I have to do is disclose it. And then you do with it what you want. Truth is always boring, so I never worry about that. Okay? Ah, here we go, Blackball. Except I don't know if you can call this boring. Every time Blackball is used, it marks a death. So see up here, it marked the death of Titus. And the start of the mission, his brother. And now the next time it's used, it's 190 to 192 AD, which covers all the attempts of everybody to assassinate Commodus, who was the son of Marcus Aurelius. And it takes them two years to figure out how to finally kill this guy, and they, they make it. So he ain't seeing nothing, and everybody was busy trying to get it to where they could be seeing him dead. Well, now they're successful. He's dead. The third time it's used. It's 249 to 251 AD. And there's so many people who die then. Who are emperors. That I had to give you a link. So you could read their names. And how they died. Scholars call this the crisis of the third century. Seven of them dying in three years. Seven Roman emperors. Seven. In three years. Seven and three. Ring a bell. Ha ha. They ain't seeing nothing. And everybody's seeing him be dead. And everybody's seeing himself replacing him. And they don't seem to realize, hi, if I fight to become emperor to kill you, then maybe somebody's going to fight to kill me. And maybe I want to live some other kind of life. Oh, no. So Bleppo is telling you a story about seeing. Here we got the divine ruling, Apocrites. Followed by a seeing. See? Divine ruling. Do you see it? No? Okay. Well, now we're going to have judgment. And it goes over and over again. In the Roman Empire in three years. Between 249 and 251. Seven emperors come and go. Each one killed by somebody. Or die naturally. Or just saying to hell with it. Okay? And then our last one that's, that's you know, well, actually, they they could keep on going. There's our black hole again in 489 and 91. What does the text say there? What context of emperor death do we need to know now? Oh, when, therefore, you see the abomination that desolates. In other words, like, an abomination to a loaf of bread would be mold. And once you see enough of it, you have to throw the whole loaf out. Okay. Oh, what's that? Who, who's that? Who's so bad that he's an abomination that he desolates? Oh, how about Zeno? The emperor of the Byzantine Empire at that point. <coughs> He was really bad. Really, really bad. You're just going to have to go look him up. In the West, you got the Ostrogoths. And Odovacher. Odovacher felled Western Rome in 476. This is 13 years later. And Odovacher dies during this time. As well as Zeno. Because Odovacher took over Rome as the emperor. I, mean, I don't think he called himself emperor, but he was actually the ruler. So, when you see the abomination, what's an abomination? Abomination that desolates is something that is so bad, it wrecks the whole thing. Okay? The immediate context was, when you see a fake god in the Holy of Holies, that abominates the temple. 
So it's got that same root connotation. A ruler who is really not the ruler but the wrecker. Okay, so Zeno was a wrecker. Hodavaka was a wrecker. So now they get wrecked and they ain't seeing nothing. And what you see is them be wrecked and what you see is the wreck that they wreck. Hey, I'm just trying to show you the wit here. Okay, now we got our next one. Oh boy, this is Otto the second. And he was all hung up on on getting on getting on getting on getting the the millennium to occur in his day. He thought he was gonna be the last emperor and then Christ will return. Well, what ends up happening is Shuwu that's Hebrew. Return. God says return. That's in uh, Psalm 90. I want to say it's verse 3. Return. Shuvu. Come back to me. Because Otto believed in Christ. He was a wacko. But he still believed. So he wanted Christ to return to earth. So God makes him return to heaven. Shuvu. And he is seeing God at that point. And we're all seeing him dead. And then everybody after Auto T decides they're going to fight over the leftovers. And Mark 13 and Revelation 17 tag this guy, Otto II, as an anaphoric center of history. See, these are all about centers. See, this is the center of history. Right now, this is where we are. Matthew 25 12 coming up on us. We're a center of history. But in the first thousand years, the center was different. And Mark 13 and Revelation 17 mark Otto as the center of history, which really shocks me because I don't know much about him. But the more I learn, the more I understand it. And the biggest thing about Otto is that he thought he was going to be the guy to see Christ return. And that really pretty much informed his whole life. He used to wear these robes that had pictures of the apocalypse on them. You know, the Apocalypse is the book of Revelation. He was real hung up on prophecy. He even went to, to Charlemagne's tomb and opened it up in order to see if Charlemagne was going to be the last emperor coming back instead of him because Charlemagne thought he was the last emperor. This isn't, this, they should make this into a movie. It's, it's, uh, there's a lot of history in there that has not told. And Otto's the guy that, you know, the historians all know this. You can read it yourself. Right? There's the link. But the Bible is targeting him. Because he dies right between the two and the four. So he ain't seeing nothing except the Lord. And we're all seeing him dead. In his fancy robes that depicted the end. Well, he's met his end. What are we going to see out of it? Well, what ends up happening from 982 or, or 93, really, when he dies onward is that the Holy Roman Empire pretty much um, turns into a free-for-all. It's, it's, it's a complete mess. And they fight for another, I don't know, 100 years. And it's musical chair emperors again. And the same thing is pretty much going on um, a little bit later in time in the Eastern Empire. Okay, it's a long story, and I, I, you can just, you know, read these links that, you know, take you through it. Okay, so what's the last one we know of? Oh, well, this one is a departure from an emperor dying. It's still an emperor dying, but it's more like the power of the emperor dies than the emperor himself. Blepo at 1120, 1122. What well, let's see the context. You always want to look at context. See, this was Otto II's context. Absentai to huio to antropu. Yeah, and that's when Otto dies. And that's what happens to him and who he sees. Meanwhile, everybody was expecting him to be the last emperor and the coming of Christ would happen while he was there. You see the wit? He thought that, if, that he would see the coming of the Son of Man. Well, yeah, he does, but he has to die to do it. 
And everybody thought he was the one that was going to see the coming of the Son of Man. So they ain't seeing nothing in Scripture that doesn't say that. Because why didn't they know this meter? See how clever it is? It ends at 1004 AD. After the 1000. Not on it. After. Yeah, because God isn't... There's, there's no guarantee when he's going to come. The scripture makes this very clear, and it's using this time in parody, in mocking Otto too. But it's not exactly 100% anti-Otto. Because now Otto died right when he thought he was going to be alive to receive the Lord, and the Lord actually receives him. Isn't that cute? Okay, so what do you expect this to be in 1120 to 1122? It's got to be cute then. Well, here's basically what happened. Okay, the Byzantine Empire was dead, so it wasn't seeing the happiness it wanted. So he wants to make it alive again. This guy John Comnenos, he gets the power the wrong way, sort of, semi, kind of, a little bit, and so he spends his whole life fighting. And they called it, oh, we're going to renovate the empire. We're going to rebirth it. Renovatio really means rebirth, revive. So he spent all his time fighting in the west first. And then he goes and fights in the east. After he fought his whole family. That's what these years are depicting his fight with his family. He finally gets power and defeats the members of his family who are against him. And then now that I've defeated my own family, I'm going to go to the West, and then I'm going to go to the East, and I'm going to make a rebirth of the Byzantine Empire. Oh, golly. So he ain't seeing nothing. He ain't seeing the word. He's seeing power lust. He's seeing fighting. And of course he's doing it in the name of God. And in the West, well, well, Henry V, the famous Henry V, got so tired after the popes and the clerics would fight with one group of Germans or Franks and another group of Germans and Franks against a third group of Germans and Franks. He got so tired of the civil wars that were going on, he's just like, oh, screw it. You clergy who we Germans have been employing as our bureaucratic arm since maybe prepping the short progressively starting with the donation of Pepin and so now we're on our side and you're our ally but we're really using you to govern and you really kind of secretly know we're using you to govern and you think you're using us to govern and you know by this time 1120 it's like oh the hell with you remember where it says in Revelation 17 they make war with the beast well war is now temporarily over the kings are like oh we don't want clergy in our government administration so we're not going to use power and of course the papacy is busy saying yes finally we're independent of this government running us when they're the ones who wanted the government to align with them in the first place back under Pepin so you see the marriage is ending in divorce now by 1120 which is just in time because that's when the second crusade is beginning to start up and now the kings don't necessarily have to go and now the papacy doesn't have the power that it had had to encourage the faithful to go to Jerusalem and spend your life and money in an imaginary uh, uh, ability to find a finger of Christ once you get there. See? So that's the death of the marriage between the Frankish kings and the papacy. It kind of got help by the fact that the papacy itself had split from the Eastern Papacy, which wasn't really a papacy, but acts like one, in fact. In 1054, this is a hundred years later, 
everybody wanted with everybody else. Well, you know what? We kings, we don't want to spend our money on you no more. So you, we won't ex exercise power over you. So now you can't come back to us and say, hi, fill our pockets. You be on your own. We're giving you your independence, which is a fancy way of saying we ain't paying for you no more. Huh? Of course, in Jerusalem, they're thinking, oh, money, 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 money. We're going to go to Jerusalem, and we're going to dig up a bunch of old bodies, and we're going to say that this is the finger of Christ, and this is the finger of Paul, and this is the finger of, I don't know, pick a saint, make up one. And then we're going to go running, 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 back to Europe, and set up a church, and say, oh, see this finger that we trot out every three years, all black, and, and all black, and... Doesn't that really look like a block of wood rather than a finger? Oh no, this is the finger of St. James. Yeah. We brought it back from the Holy Land. Well, you brought something back from the Holy Land, all right. But why would I want the finger of St. James? Why, when I can have the Word of God that's alive and powerful, sharper than any Machaira? Hmm? Why would I want your stinking finger that's dead? They ain't seeing nothing, see? See, 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 see? So Baldwin was on the throne. And they're raping. I don't mean necessarily women, although I'm sure they haven't. But they're raping the ground to search for every little piece of cloth, every ossuary, every piece of bones, and of course as many Bible manuscripts as they can find, so they can sell them back in Europe and in Byzantium. Which is good, because we needed more Bible manuscripts. And that's why the Templars were founded during this time. To find all that wealth, to find all that booty of dead people, so they could sell their fingers and make money. Or grails, or whatever other invention they wanted to make. Oh, well, see, here's this old copper couple. We'll call it the Holy Grail, and then we'll sell it to some duke for sixteen billion dollars, and laugh our way to the bank. That's what was going on then. Okay, so who's seeing what? Well, we're seeing the separation of the papacy from the kings. That's good. We're seeing John Comb Nem 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 knows and his war with his family. I don't know if you want to call that a good thing or a bad thing. We're seeing him try to renew the Byzantine Empire. Oh. So what everybody saw was war. Even though, and here's what we should have been seeing during these same three years, the Temple Mount. Baldwin to captured the Temple Mount from the Arabs for the first time in 400 years. Now, for people who love relics, this would have been a real tourist attraction if you cleaned it up. You could have made a bunch of copies of Bibles, established a monastery nearby, and entice dukes and earls and princes and princesses to come and visit you with their honorage of 16,000 people. And oh, why don't you buy this Bible that we copied and made right here next to the Temple Mount, which therefore makes it more holy because it's on holy ground. That would have been a thing Trump would have done. That should have been a thing to do. To remind us, hi, here's the real Holy of Holies that depicted Christ and he's gone home and he's coming back and here's the words he left behind. Do you want to read them? That way you can mount on your horse. You can mount on your horse after leaving the Temple Mount and you can go back to whatever land you live in and take his word with you that was made while it was next to the Temple Mount so that you have both the proximity of his body via the words in the book handy and then you can live on them and be happy oh no temple mount should have attracted the most interest could have made money too but nah 
We're going to dig in the ground and find little pieces of bone and fabric and say that it belonged to Paul or Peter or somebody so we can make a million dollars on this piece of bone or fabric. But, oh, well, here's a Bible. We'll get that, too. Won't get quite as much money for it, but, hey, it's a scripture. We can treat it like a relic, which is pretty much what the Catholics always have done. So, I'm going to stop here because it should be pretty obvious that this is the last blepo, and you can read up on this so you can see what blepo means. Peace out.